Hello, I'm Dave Neary, the Director of Developer Relations here at Ampere Computing, and I'm joined today by Regis Paquette from Canonical. Welcome. Thanks, Dave. Happy to be here. So I'm Regis Paquette. I'm uh, leading global alliances and channels at Canonical, and really happy to be here today. So Regis, the, the reason why I asked you to join me was because we recently announced the availability of Ubuntu, Ubuntu VMs on Ampere hardware on Azure. And I want to talk a little bit to you about how we've worked together to, to, to make this happen and some of the things that that partnership has enabled. Can you talk a little bit about how, we, how we've worked together to ensure that Ubuntu VMs are available on Ampere? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And this is truly exciting because I think this is really a true first between our three companies. Um, to get there, we've combined our obsessions of delivering best-in-class Ubuntu experience on Azure for the longest time, while capitalizing on the great work we've done with your teams, right? Improving dramatically performance in particular. So starting with the former, canonical teams have optimized Ubuntu on Azure environment, starting with the integration with Azure's hypervisor, improving boot time, enabling frequent new images with latest performance, security updates, confidential computing, and of course, metered support. We have then layered on this framework, all the work done together with uh, the Ampere relationships, which consisted in the ability to bring the whole ARM ecosystem of packages and applications together on that Azure VM, alongside with the price performance benefits. One of the things that I'm really excited about is, is some of the new use cases and some of the new workloads that we've enabled by running um, ARM64 native in the cloud on Ampere instances. Can you talk a little bit about some of the work that we've done to enable Android uh, running natively in the cloud? Yes, absolutely. For the longest time, Canonical has been obsessed with removing that friction between hardware and software, making sure Ubuntu will offer ubiquitous substrate to consume open source applications everywhere. And Anbox, or Android in the cloud, as you rightfully called it, is a perfect testimony of that endeavor. We've seen many customers need to aggregate compute at the mobile edge, as well as gaming applications, most of which were running on Android operating systems and app chipsets because of their mobile nature. Thanks to MP Ultra and Ultra Max chipsets, we've been able to harness the power efficiency of ARM architecture, its incredible density, I think up to 128 CPU per socket, and its wide range of compatibility with GPUs, networking cards, into a canonical supported ARM-based mobile edge compute solution called Mbox. What's amazing about Mbox, as you call that, is the variety of use cases it brings together. A Vodafone uh, has already showcased it in its cloud smartphone solution at Mobile World Congress earlier in the year. Blick to its AI-based brokering engine to Uber-like ride applications in the cloud, or Humany to solve communication compliance issues at the edge of the network, all of these being supported by Canonical. So Dave, tell me a little bit what are your perspectives about the partnerships between Ampere, Canonical, and Azure? Well, obviously, as you know, Ubuntu has long been the most popular operating system for cloud native application developers. And so it was very important for Ampere uh, to ensure that our customers had access to all of the software that you bring together in the Ubuntu operating system. And one of the things that's been really interesting to me, seeing Ampere deployed across cloud service providers and especially on Azure is, as you pointed out, the power performance that we offer, which I think for cloud native application developers is going to be increasingly important moving forward. I don't know if you're aware, but data centers currently use between 1% and 2% of all of the electricity produced on Earth. And that's going to be rising over the, next, uh, over the next few years, unless we do something to correct that. And one of the things that Ampere processors bring to the table is the ability to run cloud-native workloads at a much lower uh, carbon footprint. And I think that's something that all cloud-native developers are going to be worried about as we move forward. Yeah, this is a very valid point. And we are also obsessed at Canonical with the cardboard footprint. And that's why we keep bringing also smaller versions of, of uh, the operating systems in, uh, into more cost-efficient also uh, environments. Regis, as you know, uh, Ampere is a different architecture to traditional x86. Can you speak a little bit to the availability of software on Ampere VMs running Ubuntu? Because I'm sure that some people will, will be concerned that there's some software that's available on x86 but is not available on Ampere? Yeah, Dave, this is a very good question. Thanks for asking. 
ARM is indeed a very different architecture than x86 and software does need to be specifically built to run on that architecture. So there are differences in what's available, but one of the great strengths we have in the open source world is that we have the source code and we can build it for a new architecture instead of relying on third-party vendor to release a different version. What that means is that the vast majority of open source packages you know and use are available for ARM-based CPUs, more than 95% on rough numbers I've, I've seen, right? Uh, there are specific workloads like NBox where ARM peer CPUs have significant performance improvements and developer interest in those areas has always been strong. But with Microsoft now talking about savings up to 50% on price performance when using Ampere instances, we expect to see increasing numbers of general cloud developers to evaluate whether moving cloud workloads to Ampere instances makes sense for them. Thank you. In fact, we've seen in some of our benchmarking that there are significant benefits in terms of throughput, in terms of performance, and in terms of power usage using uh, Ampere instances versus uh, alternatives. Thank you again for joining me today. Regis, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you and long may this partnership continue. Yeah, and thanks Dave a lot for having me today and looking very much forward to all the next steps on this partnerships. Mm -hmm.